Hey, it's Anna McHugh. I'm out in the woods on a beautiful but a little bit warm Saturday morning in Raleigh, North Carolina. I am uh, spending some time with a really nice patch of a mushroom that's called the peppery milky cap. The Latin name for this, or the best Latin name that you can use to describe it for now, is Lactifluus piperatus. I uh, say for now because it's very possible that uh, Lactifluus piperatus uh, and its former name, Lactarius piperatus, is only a European thing. This is a very, very common theme in mycology. It's almost hilarious. Uh, because almost any North American mushroom that you can name, there's at least, I don't know, a 30% chance that someone will say, well, yes, it is kind of that, and you can eat it the way that you can eat the European thing, but the European thing is genetically uh, distinct. So anyway, I'm going to call this uh, Lactifluus piperatus with all of that in mind. It is a fairly easy mushroom to identify, and it is also uh, fairly common. It is a sort of white cream throughout. It's bald and dry. It's a, not slimy or smooth. So, you know, you can rub on it. It's a little bit on the, you know, soft and uh, bald, but not, you know, not sticky, not slimy, anything along those lines. Uh, you do often, um, as the mushroom matures, see a little divot in the center and uh, you start to see some yellow and yellow brown coloration sort of come up, especially as the mushroom is handled and you know things fall on top of it, etc. The thing that makes the peppery milky cap super recognizable is, uh, first of all, it has a lot of milk uh, or latex that comes from the gills. So I've damaged this mushroom a little bit uh, so that you can see it. Uh, the other feature is that the gills are really tightly packed. It's almost impossible to, you know, distinguish each individual one. So even though it has a good bit of milk that it bleeds, you don't have uh, sort of this, you know, dramatic ripping and beating of uh, large gills that you see with a lot of other lactarius and lactifluous mushrooms. Uh, the thing, and I, I actually, let's see if we can do uh, an example of live... Uh, live lactating of this mushroom. Let's see what we've got here. So I just damaged it. You could see a couple of beads starting to form there. It's not super significant, but uh, if I break it out, you know, break it apart, I've got a good bit of milk on my hands. It's a little bit sticky, but the thing that I have to be now really cautious of and how this mushroom gets its uh, common name, the peppery milky cap, is because this mushroom's milk is extraordinarily spicy. And I mean like very, very, very spicy pepper along with um, this sort of burning element. I mean, it's just rotten. So I am very cautious when I handle this mushroom because it is, uh, it will linger. I learned this firsthand. Uh, the first time I collected this mushroom, I was pretty excited about it and I love those tightly packed gills. So I was handling it. I washed my hands off in a creek and I'm like, okay, I'm good to go. Of course, 45 minutes later, I picked my nose and the remainder of the day, I had this uh, lovely burning mushroom sensation up my snout. Now that I am hanging out with them, I've had a lovely morning, no allergies whatsoever. And all of a sudden my nose just needs to be scratched in ways that I haven't experienced in weeks. So that is purely psychosomatic, I'm sure. Uh, but you know, I guess uh, if I am co-occurring alongside Lactifluus piperatus, I have to be careful around my uh, nasal passages in particular. So um, as far as edibility, this mushroom is way, way too uh, spicy and acrid to be uh, palatable. Um, I think that there are, uh, among, you know, other species, it can be, uh, salted and a lot of people in Eastern Europe will eat all kinds of, uh, peppery milky caps and peppery russulas and treat them through, uh, salting and, pi uh, salting and pickling of piperatus processes, uh, in order to sort of neutralize, uh, the spiciness. Another thing that's interesting, and I don't, I've never seen this myself, but um, there is a lot of uh, people that um, say, and you'll see this in guidebooks, that uh, the lobster mushroom, Hypomyces lactiflorum, is uh, associated with and will parasitize uh, Lactifluus piperatus. And so um, Hypomyces lactiflorum is uh, basically a mold and it, it attacks, uh, you know, Russula mushrooms for sure, and possibly these uh, peppery milky caps. And it turns it into this like elaborate uh, orangey red seafood flavored mushroom. I did a video about it last week. So the thing that's interesting is that, you know, when you pick a, a lobster mushroom, it's kind of seafoody flavored. It's nice and it's pleasant. 
Um, and the question in my mind always is, how could something that is this spicy and this unpalatable be transformed so radically by the hypomyces mold? Um, so anyway, I, I think the current um, understanding is that it's, it's possible and likely, and it is an observational uh, sort of hypothesis. So people have very frequently seen lobster mushrooms growing side by side with Lactifluus piperatus. So that's all I really have to say on them. You know, you'll typically find them in ones and twos. I'm actually just in a really big patch, but uh, you know, again, ample milk that comes from the gills. You also have a nice snap, actually. That's a, that's a good uh, feature as well. These are uh, pretty, you know, uh, solid, but brittle mushrooms. So you have your milk, you have these extraordinarily tight packed gills, uh, whitish bald mushroom that will burn your face off. Uh, just a good reminder to not pick your nose, especially if you're a mushroom hunter, just because you're in the woods does not mean that uh, people can't see you and that the mushrooms can't um, correct your behavior.